Hi, my name is Harvey, and today I'll be talking about a new black box attack that our team has developed that can exploit both speech recognition and voice identification systems. So attacks against ML models or adversarial ML has gained a lot of traction in the past few years. The goal of the attack is to come up with inputs that the human and the ML model will interpret differently. In the case of attacks against voice systems, you start off with an audio sample. Um, when this audio sample is given to the human, the human hears the benign command, which is, what's the weather? But when the same audio sample is given to the voice assistant, in this case a Siri, the voice assistant will output a malicious command, which is, unlock the door. Now, this is an example of a targeted attack, where the attacker wants to force the voice assistant to output a target transcription. And if you were to look at the existing literature, there has been a lot of really solid work that has been done in the space of targeted attacks. But what about untargeted ones? Here, the attacker wants the model to output anything but the original output. And unfortunately, there hasn't been any work done in this space. This is quite unfortunate because there are a lot of applications where untargeted attacks might be very useful. So think about building robust audio captures. Recent work has shown that BOSS use speech recognition services to identify and transcribe audio captures with very high accuracy. So using these untargeted attacks to make audio captures robust to transcription would be really useful against these bots. Or consider the case of evading mass telephony surveillance networks. These networks record and transcribe millions of hours of phone call data to perform surveillance on their populations. Or even evading content ID systems, such as that on YouTube. Um, you might want to upload a proprietary music file on YouTube without being flagged. Now, these are just a few examples, each, each of which deserves multiple papers. And clearly there's a need for untargeted attacks in this space, which current literature doesn't actually fulfill. So I'm sure some of you might be thinking, well, why can't we just use those targeted attacks instead? Well, that's because well, targeted attacks have some severe limitations. They often require white box access, which an attacker might not have in the real world. They are not real time, in fact, they're really slow because they require thousands of queries to the target system. And to add to that, samples that these attacks produce do not actually transfer to different models. And lastly, these attack, uh, these attack samples are very sensitive to noise and won't be able to operate in, robust, in, in lossy environments such as that of the telephony network. So what do we do to fill in this gap? In this paper, we propose a generic attack algorithm that can create transferable adversarial samples. These samples sound like the original to the human ear, but can force a voice model to produce an untargeted output. The attack can work against both speech recognition and voice identification systems, and can succeed in black box settings. But before we talk about the attack itself, let's look at the voice system pipeline that we'll be exploiting. So we start off with an audio sample. The audio sample is passed on to the pre-processing stage. Here we apply low pass filters to remove any sort of high frequency or rudimentary noise from the audio. Next, the audio is passed to the feature extraction phase, which is designed to emulate the human ear. It uses signal processing algorithms to extract features that the human ear finds most important. This, these are known as feature vectors, which are then passed onto the model, and the model produces an output transcript. Now, most attacks in the adversarial ML space target the model inference stage of the pipeline. Rather than attacking the model itself, we attack the feature extraction phase, specifically the signal processing algorithms it uses. These are known as signal processing attacks. Specifically, in this paper, we exploit how frequencies that the human ear does not find important and might not even hear, are very important for model inference. So when we remove these frequencies, this, not, this might not impact human intelligibility at all, but doing so will actually confuse the model into producing an incorrect output. So by ex attacking the feature extraction phase, we really don't need to know anything about the underlying model. The model is irrelevant. And this makes our attack successful in black box settings.
So how does the attack work anyway? Well, we start off with an audio sample that we want to perturb and pass it to the attack algorithm. Now, the first step of the attack algorithm is to break the audio into its subsequent frequencies. And one of the most popular methods for this task is the discrete Fourier transform or the DFT. So the DFT tells us which frequencies make up an input signal. And you can see the DFT output on your screen right now. On the x-axis, you can see the different frequencies. And on the y-axis, you can see the corresponding intensities. Now, we hypothesize that frequencies with low intensities are not important to the human ear, but are in fact important to the model for correct transcription. So we remove these frequencies, hoping to confuse the model. But the question you might ask yourself is, well, which frequencies should you remove? And for that, we employ a binary search approach. So we set a threshold at 50% of the maximum intensity in the signal. All the frequencies that have less intensity than the threshold, shown in green right now, are discarded, which means that we just set them to zero. Whatever frequencies are left, shown in red, are used to reconstruct a perturbed audio sample, which is given to the model, and the model outputs a garbage transcription. Now, some of you might be thinking to yourself right now, if we throw out half the frequencies, won't that significantly degrade the audio quality? Well, that, that, that's correct, yes, that's right. So we want to make sure we throw out as few frequencies as possible while still being able to evade the model. And this is because throwing fewer frequencies allows us to maintain high audio quality. Therefore, we will iterate to the next step of the binary search, that is, start off with the original audio sample again, take the DFT. Now, instead of using the 50% threshold like we did last time, we'll reduce it to 25%. We'll figure out which frequency is set to zero, which is uh, the ones in green, uh, which fall below the 25% threshold, set them to zero, reconstruct the audio, pass it to the model, and the model outputs a different garbage transcription. Now we will keep repeating this process until we reach the smallest threshold for which the model's output, uh, the model outputs the wrong transcript. So what, now that we understand how the attack works, we need to think about what part of the audio we want to perturb. Now, traditionally, attacks in the audio space perturb the full width of the audio sample. And this isn't great because you're introducing the noise across the entire signal, which significantly impacts audio quality. But what if we want to perturb only a tiny fraction of the audio and still be able to fool the model? That will give us both advantages at the same time, high audio quality and attack success. We can perform this sort of perturbation at different granularities. We can do it at the word level, where we only perturb a single word or every, every few words, or we can, we, can, we can even perturb at even a more finer grain level, which is at the phoneme level, which is where you only perturb a single phoneme. But what's interesting to note here is that perturbing the audio samples at this granularity distorts a large chunk of the transcription, not just the unit we are perturbing. And that's because voice systems are context dependent. They use information about previous timestamps to make an inference about the current one. So perturbing a few timestamps can impact the entire transcript. Uh, we perform both levels of attack, phoneme and word, in the paper, but we'll focus on the phoneme level attack in this talk. To see the effect of the phoneme level attack, we use the timid data set. We pull out individual sentences and perturb one phoneme at a time and observe the corresponding change in transcription. We measure this change using the cosine similarity score. The larger the cosine score, the larger the change in transcription. Now, we can see that how changing a single phoneme, in this case a vowel for Google, has an average cosine similarity score of 0 0.8. This means that changing just a single vowel can actually distort the model's output by 80%. But why is this actually happening? Well, as I mentioned earlier, voice models use context. So perturbing just a single time step carries the error into all future time steps, ruining the transcription. So this actually brings me to a very important observation and one major advantage of using our attack. The attacker doesn't need to perturb the entire audio. In fact, perturbing one vowel or any phoneme for that matter can cause a large chunk of the audio to mistranscribe. I know. So this slide shows the impact of our attack on model transcription. 
So in the case of Google, when we perturb the, the O in no evil, it actually forces the Google speech API to output Keenan's bill instead of the original phrase, which is no evil. And that's where our paper got the name, hey, no evil, see Keenan's bill. Now we see an extreme case for wit where perturbing a single G actually ruins the entire transcription of the audio, forcing the model to output just a single word, nope. So let's quickly go over the capabilities our tag provides. It can force speech recognition models to output random text and speaker recognition models to output random users. And if you're interested in our speaker recognition experiments, you should definitely check out the paper. We tested more than 1200 attack audio samples in the case of speaker recognition models and about 20 speakers in the case of speaker recognition models. Overall, our tag takes less than 15 queries to the model to generate an adversarial sample. And that's primarily because of the binary search approach that we employ. And because it takes so little time to craft adversarial samples, we were able to successfully exploit models from Google, Facebook, and many other models. So in essence, by attacking the feature extraction stage of the speech recognition pipeline, instead of the model itself, we can successfully exploit any black box voice system. Now, I'm sure some of you are shouting at your screens right now. What does the audio even sound like, Hadi? Well, your wait is finally over. It's demo time. I'm going to play a benign audio sample for you and try to make out the text in the audio. The emperor had a mean temper. So when we give this audio sample to Google, Google output the transcription, the emperor had a mean temper, which is the correct output. So let's hear the audio sample one more time. The emperor had a mean temper. Now, we took this audio file and we perturbed it. So now you'll hear the perturbed version of the audio. The emperor had a mean temper. Now the difference between the original and this perturbed audio sample are almost inaudible. However, when we gave this perturbed sample to Google, it output Semper Hanuman Temple. And this kind of illustrates how our attack maintained audio quality while still successfully fooling the model. To further understand the impact of the attack on audio quality, we conducted a user study. Each participant was asked to listen to and transcribe perturbed audio samples. So for example, one audio sample we gave the listeners contained the command, how are you, how's work going? This was a perturbed sample, so when we gave it to the voice system, it would output the incorrect transcript, how are you, postmortoro. To measure the impact on audio quality, we had asked participants for their respective transcriptions. So higher transcription accuracy means higher audio quality. Our results showed that on average, the transcription accuracy for benign audio samples is around 98%. And the accuracy for, for attack audio sample is around 96%. So this shows us, shows us that the human interpretability of attack audio is very similar to that of benign audio samples. So effectively, the attack is able to maintain audio quality and still fool the model. Now, in case you slept through this entire talk, let's just go over the takeaways really quickly. In this paper, we present a simple, efficient, and untargeted attack that can exploit any voice processing system. Because we target the feature extraction stage of the, of the pipeline, the model is just irrelevant. And as a consequence, all the systems we tested are in fact vulnerable. We showed that we can exploit both speech recognition and speaker recognition models. And as a consequence, we can achieve the same goals as traditional adversarial ML attacks. And at this point, I'll take easy questions.